Hurry up! Will you? I apologize. I'll get ready right away. I was living with my husband's parents because he asked me to. Even before moving in, I had a slightly uncomfortable feeling, but since we started living together, every day felt like hell. Can't young people do this? There's no point in arguing. Proper education is impossible in a single-parent household, after all. That's true. I was just doing household chores, cleaning, laundry, and meal preparation, all by myself. However, it seemed they were mocking my mother too, and my patience was wearing thin. At that moment, I must have looked at my in-laws with intense hatred. Realizing this, my mother-in-law approached me and slapped my cheek without saying a word. What are you doing? This is for your education. Since you married Mateo, you're practically our possession. So, this is only natural. What's natural about this? It's just violence. Hey, stop hitting your face. It'll cause unnecessary suspicion, won't it? It's fine. We can say she fell down the stairs or something. I knew things were bad, but this was beyond alarming. Why are you spacing out? Oh, it's nothing. Enough. Let's go out for dinner today. You can handle the cleanup. And to make matters worse, Mateo was away on a business trip, so I couldn't call for help immediately. Even if he couldn't come right away, I wanted to share this with Mateo. What's wrong? Um, it's about your mother and father. Did something happen? I was just slapped a moment ago. Slapped? More like she hit my cheek. I see. He didn't seem very surprised. He listened matter-of-factly, as if it were mere gossip. That's it? Huh. Well, for now, I can tell you not to defy those two. That's the situation. Sorry, but I'm tired. So, well. Wait. He hung up. My head was spinning. Was Matteo also on his parents' side? I considered relying on my only flesh and blood mother, but I didn't want to burden her with unnecessary worries, knowing how busy she was. What should I do? I had no choice but to obey my in-laws' demands. It happened one day like that. We're having a party at home soon, so why not invite your mother? It's a great opportunity. A party? Yes. Lots of relatives will be coming, and it'll be livelier with more people, right? I'll ask my mother. I immediately contacted my mother. It's unusual for you to reach out. So, what's going on? Um, there's a party here next Sunday. They asked if you'd come too. I see. A brief silence followed. It's a perfect chance. Let's go. A perfect chance? You'll understand the meaning soon enough. Uh, okay. And so, my mother and I ended up attending the party at my in-law's house. On the morning of the party, by the way, won't Matteo be coming back? Oh, he's busy and won't be able to return. We received a message. I didn't have. Hey, what are you doing there? Everyone will be arriving soon. I know. Relatives started arriving early in the morning. Meeting so many new people made me nervous. As I was entertaining them, my mother-in-law said something. 
When will your mother arrive? She said she'd be here soon. We're busy. She needs to come quickly. Um, sorry. Fifteen minutes later, my mother arrived. I'm sorry for being late. Don't worry about it. Her smile at that moment was unsettling. More relatives arrived, and the living room was crowded. As the flow settled down, just as we were about to take a break, you must be tired too. Let's rest a bit. Yes. As I headed toward the living room, my mother stopped me. What's wrong? There's something I need to talk to you about. She began discussing our in-laws. What? What do you mean? You know I'm the CEO, right? I receive various information every day. And this. I hadn't expected this to involve Matteo. But after hearing my mother's explanation, it made sense. All right, both of you, it's work time. Work? Did you think you were guests? You two are domestic staff. Now, cook and serve. Hearing those words, even my usually mild-mannered mother showed a stern expression. Then she muttered, Let's leave. I know what to do next. Yes, the atmosphere here is unpleasant. Huh. Ignoring the surprised relatives with wide eyes, my mother and I left the in-law's house. Although this was technically my home, I no longer cared. When I heard my mother's story, my resolve was clear, revenge against my in-laws and Matteo's liberation. My name is Violet. Currently, I am a full-time housewife supporting my family. I live with Matteo and my mother, but the journey to this point has been full of twists and turns. Lost in thought? Yeah, thinking about something from the past. The past? Yes, about those two. Sometimes, I recall moments. Looking back, it all started with meeting my husband, Matteo. Before getting married, I worked as an office clerk in a small company. I had no clear goals and was just drifting through life. This feeling began when my father passed away from cancer during my middle school years. Originally, my father ran a business, but now my mother took over. Honestly, I felt quite lonely. What time will you be home today? I'm sorry. I think I'll be late again. There's food in the fridge. Warm it up and have dinner. Understood. Of course, I understood that my mother was doing her best for me. But I tried my hardest not to inconvenience her. Without clear goals, I continued to drift. I chose schools close to home for high school and college. Perhaps due to this, I lacked interest in relationships even after starting work. It was during this time that I met Matteo, who worked in sales, through a mutual acquaintance. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. The acquaintance said, This is Violet. She's a bit reserved, so Matteo, make sure to keep her entertained. Matteo asked, Is that so? I replied, Hey, don't say unnecessary things. Despite the awkwardness, Matteo's efforts to make me feel comfortable were endearing. What do you usually do, Violet? I'm an indoor person, so I play games, read books, and watch movies at home. I'm the same. Any recommendations? What kind of stuff do you like? Hmm. We chatted and got along well, and before we knew it, the mutual acquaintance had left. 
After exchanging contact information, we became close and started spending more time together. Despite being an introvert, I started going out more often because of Mateo's invitations. It seemed to have a positive impact on me, as colleagues at work noticed I became more cheerful. About two months after meeting, we started dating. I was invited to Mateo's family home. Is this Mateo's family home? Does something seem off? No, I just thought it looked impressive. I'd lived here for almost 20 years. Meeting a boyfriend's parents was new to me, so I was nervous throughout. When I asked about his parents, it turned out they ran a small construction business as a family. Mateo himself had aspirations to eventually take over from his parents. On the other hand, I felt a bit envious because I lacked such clear goals. I was drawn to Mateo's hardworking nature like my mother. And so, I grew stronger in my desire to support him. Feel free to visit us again. Thank you for today. Our relationship continued smoothly. And by the time I turned 27, we both started seriously considering marriage. Then, just a week before my birthday, something unexpected happened. I want to marry you. I'll make sure we're happy. I'm thrilled. Thank you, and I look forward to it. We decided to submit our marriage registration on my birthday. My mother listened to the news of my marriage with a very kind look on her face. But there was one issue, Mateo's parents. When visiting my in-laws, my father-in-law wasted no time and asked me a question after the greetings. Violet, your family is a single-parent household, right? Yes, that's correct. And what do you do for work? Um, I work as an office clerk. Then my father-in-law said something outrageous. Anyone can do such an easy job. Why not consider a career change? Hey, that's not the right way to put it, is it? I'm just stating the facts. My mother-in-law, however, went even further with hurtful words. You shouldn't say things like that, dear. I thought my mother-in-law might be on my side. Why are young people so useless? He sighed heavily, a stark contrast to his demeanor during our previous visit. But that wasn't all. Now even my mother became the target. Well, single mothers usually aren't good people. Well. Mateo stepped in to defend me. That's going too far, isn't it? What? Are you talking back to us? It's not talking back. Violet and her mother work hard every day. And on top of that, you two have been home all the time lately. Caught off guard, the two of them exchanged surprised glances. My father-in-law sighed again. You really think that way? If you won't accept us, I won't inherit the company and we won't come back to this house. The two of them looked flustered and unsettled. Despite not being fully welcomed by my in-laws, our feelings about getting married remained unchanged. I held a faint hope that our relationship with them would gradually improve after marriage. But unfortunately, their attitude toward me didn't change. If anything, it got worse. In the end, Mateo's firm words on that day allowed us to proceed with the marriage. However, my in-laws couldn't stay quiet. They started coming over more frequently, and it seemed they even obtained a spare key from Mateo. I'd return from work to find my mother-in-law comfortably sitting on the sofa. Are you here again? What kind of tone is that? Are we not allowed to visit? I didn't mean it that way. Well, if that's not your intention, then it's fine. Obviously, it's not fine. 
I wanted to say that directly, but I held my tongue to avoid unnecessary trouble. Living in such a nice place, you should be grateful to Mateo too. Clearly, my mother-in-law didn't see me as an equal. Otherwise, she wouldn't bother coming here just to say that and then leave. And now that she had a taste for it, my mother-in-law even roped my father-in-law into her antics. One day. Wait, where's that ornament that was here? Hmm. I think a friend gave it to us. Yes, but it couldn't just disappear suddenly. Could it be that you too? Well, maybe. Actually, it's quite possible. Mateo promptly made a phone call, and he put it on speaker so I could hear the conversation too. What do you want? I have something to ask. Do you know about the slightly larger ornament that was in our living room? It's made overseas. I have no idea. What are you talking about? It's missing from our place. You're not suggesting it's my fault, are you? Who else is there? Only you two have free access to our house, right? Why would I do something like that? Maybe it was stolen or something? Mateo smirked and looked at me. Well then, I'll call the police. Whoever stole it will probably get arrested. Thanks for the advice. Bye. Just as he was about to hang up, something unexpected happened. Wait, wait a moment. What? It wasn't me. Your father said it looked expensive. What? I tried to stay silent, but I couldn't. So, what happened to it? I sold it. I was too shocked to find words. Well, then. Hey. This time, she hung up the phone. Unbelievable. I never expected it to go this far. We'll probably be targeted again. Let's change the locks immediately. I feel terrible. I just gave them the key. I'm really sorry. No, it's not just your fault. We promptly changed the locks by making a phone call. And later, my in-laws visited our home, returning the stolen ornament. We're truly sorry. Please forgive us. Don't ever do something like this again. We should have reported it to the police. We've learned our lesson. She left with her head down. Honestly, I secretly thought, serves you right, when I saw her expression. They won't cause any more trouble now. Well, let's hope so. Unfortunately, my worst fears were realized. While working as usual, I received a call from Mateo. My parents were taken to the hospital. What? I don't know all the details yet, but it seems they were in an accident. I explained the situation to my boss and rushed to the hospital. Mateo was already there when I arrived. How are your parents? Well, it's complicated. Huh? Despite being in an accident, his expression seemed more exasperated than concerned. Are they okay? Not exactly. When we reached the emergency center where they were, they seemed surprisingly lively for accident victims. Oh, you came. Are you okay? You were in an accident, right? We were hit, but... I was starting to lose track of what was true. In the end, they had no major injuries and were allowed to go home immediately. However, the doctor warned them that sudden pain might still occur. We caused trouble, didn't we? 
Well, it's true we were in an accident. At least we'll get a good settlement. I had something I wanted to buy anyway. I couldn't help but suspect their true motives. Since I wasn't at the accident scene, I couldn't say for sure, but my suspicions seemed to be on point. And then, one week later, I hear something unbelievable from Mateo's mouth. I'm sorry, but I don't really understand. It seems that both of us are not feeling well, and they've asked if you could live with us. So, that means living together, right? Yeah. That's just. Mateo apologized deeply for the sudden request. Seeing him like that, I can't bring myself to refuse. Understood. Preparations for moving progress quickly, and just one week later, I start living with my in-laws. Although it's Mateo's request, I can't say I truly desire this cohabitation, it fills me with anxiety. Thank you for coming. We really appreciate it. I'm counting on you. The first day goes smoothly, but then... Mateo will be training in an acquaintance's company as our successor. Training? Yes. Mateo is an important child to us. What about Mateo? He's already left. What? From now on, let's be a happy family of three. At that moment, I realized I couldn't escape. In reality, my position in this house is at its lowest. I feel like a housekeeper. My life is almost entirely restricted. I have to contribute my income for living expenses, and I can't spend money freely. I hesitate to tell my mother, but I feel like my heart will die if I continue like this. So, I called her. Violet, how are you? Um, I'm okay. Don't hold back. You don't need to worry about me. Did you think I was too busy to contact you? My mother can see through me. With so much going on, I hadn't even mentioned cohabitation. Actually, I'm living at Mateo's parents' house. I see. Mateo is away, saying he's in training. Training? What's that? I tell her everything. By the way, Mateo's parents were business owners, right? Yes. I'll look into the company a bit. When will Mateo come back? Even if I ask, I don't know. They won't give me specific details about the location. That's troublesome. But talking like this makes me feel a bit better. I should have contacted you sooner. I'm glad we could talk. But don't push yourself too hard. If anything happens, feel free to call me anytime. Thank you. Well then. I hang up the phone, gather my resolve, and just then, my mother-in-law appears. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. There's still more for you to do. Get moving. Dealing with one mother-in-law is manageable, but now my father-in-law joins in. I'm done. Thank you. You're free now. Taking a short break, I hear from my father-in-law. Are you free now? I'm taking a little break. Then go shopping for me. Um, what should I buy? Give me those cookies I like. But, the ones you like are from that shop. Yeah, the ones from that place. Right now? What? You have a problem with that? No. Then go get them. Hurry up, or you'll be sleeping outside tonight. 
Get ready! These people are relentless. The shop is quite far away, and it's already past 12 o'clock. If I don't hurry, it'll be closed. I take trains, exhausted, and by the time I reach the shop, I'm completely worn out. Somehow, I buy what my father-in-law wants and return. I won't even have an hour here. When I arrive back at my in-law's house, both of them are out, and the door is locked. Unable to enter the house, it was two hours later when my in-laws returned. What are you doing out here? Well, the door was locked. Never mind. Get inside. As I entered the living room, the scene seemed oddly set up, as if I were about to receive a scolding. So, did you buy what we asked for? Oh. Yes, here it is. I opened the bag I'd brought, but their expressions darkened. This isn't it. Huh? But this is the one you like, isn't it? Honestly, you can't even do this. My mother-in-law sighed. From then on, enduring their daily mistreatment became my only option. I avoided expressing emotions or arguing with them. But it didn't matter, they continued regardless. Can't you be quicker? I apologize. I'll prepare it right away. By now, I could only follow their orders without question. Young people these days can't even handle this? You should say something too. It's pointless. A child from a single parent household can't receive proper education. True. I was merely doing household chores. Cleaning, laundry, meal preparation, all fell on my shoulders. But even my mother was belittled. My patience was wearing thin. At that moment, I must have looked at my in-laws with intense resentment. My mother-in-law noticed and approached me, slapping my cheek without a word. What are you doing? This is part of your education. Since you married Mateo, you're practically our property. So this is only natural. Enough with the face slapping. We don't want unnecessary suspicions. Don't worry, dear. Just say she fell down the stairs. I'd sensed trouble before, but this was beyond that. Why are you spacing out? Uh, nothing. Never mind. Let's dine out tonight. You can handle the cleanup. And to make matters worse, Mateo was away on a business trip, so I couldn't call for help. Even if he couldn't come immediately, I wanted to share this with Mateo. What's wrong? Um, it's about your mother and father. Did something happen? I was slapped just now. Slapped? Well, technically, she hit my cheek. I see. His reaction lacked surprise. He listened matter-of-factly, almost detached. So, that's it? Ah. Oh. For now, just don't defy them. That's my advice. Sorry, but I'm tired. Later. Wait, wait. He hung up. My head was spinning. Is Matteo also siding with my in-laws? I considered reaching out to my only blood relative, my mother, but I knew she was busy, and I didn't want to burden her unnecessarily. What should I do? I had no choice but to comply with my in-laws' demands. Then, one day. We're having a party at home soon. Invite your mother, it's a good opportunity. A party? 
Yes. Lots of relatives will come. It'll be livelier with your mother, won't it? I'll ask my mother. I immediately contacted my mother. It's rare for you to call. What's up? Um, there's a party here next Sunday, and they asked if you'd come. I see. A brief silence followed. It's a good chance. Let's go. A good chance? You'll understand soon enough. Okay. And so, my mother and I would attend the party at my in-law's house. And on the morning of the party day, I wonder, won't Matteo be coming back? Oh, he's busy and won't be able to come back. We received a message. I don't have. Hey, what are you doing there? Everyone should be arriving soon. I understand. Relatives start arriving in the morning. Meeting so many new people makes me nervous. As I'm hosting them, my mother-in-law says something. When will your mother arrive? She said she'd be here soon. We're busy. She needs to come quickly. I apologize. Fifteen minutes later, my mother arrives. I'm sorry for being late. Don't worry about it. Her smile at that moment is the most unsettling thing. Relatives continue to arrive, and the living room is crowded. As the flow of people settles, I try to take a break. Mom must be tired too. Let's rest. Yes. As I head toward the living room, my mother stops me. What's wrong? There's something I want to talk about. My mother starts discussing our in-laws. What? What do you mean? You know I'm the company president, right? So, I receive various information every day. And this. I never thought this would also involve Matteo. But after hearing my mother's explanation, it makes sense. Now, both of you, it's time for work. What? Work? What? Did you think today was just a social visit? You and your mother are like housemaids. Come on, prepare food and serve. Hearing this, even my usually gentle mother shows a stern expression. Then my mother mutters something. Let's leave. I know what to do next. Yes, the atmosphere here is unpleasant. Huh. Ignoring their surprised expressions, my mother and I leave the in-law's house. Although it's technically my home, I no longer care. When my mother shared her story, my decision was made. Revenge against my in-laws and Mateo's liberation. Back at my parents' house, we took immediate action. As it turns out, the construction company my in-laws managed was already drowning in debt. Who knew they had so much debt? And despite that, why do you think they were fine until now? I don't understand. Earlier, we talked about Matteo, right? He's being forced to work off the debt, isn't he? Exactly. But they keep borrowing. In other words, Matteo will be their slave for life. That's awful. What should we do? That's not a problem. At that moment, I didn't fully grasp what my mother was saying. However, it became clear when my in-laws came over three days later. What did you do? You came. Just tell me what you did. 
My mother began to slowly explain what she had done. It turned out that the people my in-laws were in debt to were quite dangerous, running a construction business while exploiting illegal immigrants. My mother had uncovered this and used the information to get Mateo back. No way! I'm sorry, but you'll have to deal with the debt yourselves. Then the intercom rang. At the entrance were Mateo and my father-in-law. Mateo! I'm sorry for the trouble. It's no trouble! Thus, the whole family was reunited. Mateo! It's no use! We just got a call! We have to pay it back immediately! We don't have that kind of money! Here, I made a suggestion. Why don't one of you take Mateo's place? The in-laws looked at each other. Then you go, dear. Why me? Because I can't work. What are you talking about? That accident was your... Accident? That accident was planned by your mother to get settlement money. It turned out the accident was their own doing. Truly despicable. Save the fight for when you get home. What? This is all because... And can you afford to relax now? Indeed. We need to focus on getting through today first. Father-in-law stood up and left. Mother-in-law, though stunned, followed him out. The hard part starts now. Thank you so much. No, I just want you two to be happy together. Thank you, Mom. We finally had a peaceful and enjoyable time together. I wonder what will happen to those two. Since then, my in-laws have chosen to declare bankruptcy. They had to give up their house and now live in a shabby hut. Mateo, who quit his hellish job, now works at my mother's company supporting her diligently. My in-laws had forced him to quit sales and do manual labor in the mountains. Mateo is really suited for this kind of work. Indeed. He seems so lively lately. He used to be at their mercy, but now he's fine. Make sure to support him well. I will. Mateo quickly adapted to the company with his seriousness and cheerfulness. In just a few months, there was even talk of a promotion. I felt proud of Mateo and decided to continue supporting him. Mateo, you're amazing! Really? If only I had noticed your struggles sooner! That's all in the past! Now! I'm so fulfilled that I forget about it. It's all thanks to you too. That's not true. They always thank me. I support them from the shadows, ensuring they can focus on work. That's enough for me. With them, I know my life will go well. How did you like this story? Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.